Laura, even if the Fed has one or two hikes still in the bag, do you think yields have peaked? I think there is a, a fair consensus that that is probably the case. Uh, you know, what we've seen with, with the banking crisis, uh, the potentially earlier stages of the banking crisis, because it's not necessarily over just yet. I think there is a, an understanding within markets that, you know, we've seen now some response from central banks, uh, and it feels like inflation is probably, at least in the US and hopefully in other countries, maybe not going to be the sole determinant in, de in deciding future rate hikes from here, even though it's still the best tool to be dealing with that. I think there's other things that uh, central banks need to be concerned about. We've started to see small shifts in that direction from both the ECB and also the Fed, even if they did deliver hikes themselves those days. So, so can I expect then the dollar to continue to weaken? We do feel at this stage that the dollar is probably, again, it's, it's a selective story. So even though we've obviously seen the weakness um, over the, the past few weeks, uh, what we're thinking now is, is clearly when you look at uh, certain pairs within dollar Asia, um, there is still room uh, for, for the dollar to, to move lower. Uh, and for some of those economies, whether it's India, Indonesia, Thailand, to actually do better. Uh, but actually against potentially the euro and, uh, and the yen, I think the yen is one where that story might take a little bit longer to play out, but certainly the dollar could find weakness there. Um, but I think against some of the proxies, like the Aussie dollar, for example, there could still be some weakness ahead for the Aussie. So finding potentially some US dollar strength there. But obviously, it all depends how risk is going to trade. Uh, but you need to be looking right now selectively at whether you want to you know, be trading high beta currencies or looking more at the underlying stories within, say, the Asian economies. Right. Uh, and, and just since you mentioned the euro, Laura, just uh, talk us through that. Uh, because if, if the ECB, while they might be affected by what's happening globally, well, do you think do you, do you think they still have more to go? And does that open up more upside in the euro that hasn't yet been priced, if it hasn't been priced, of course? Yeah, so I think if you look at the reaction of the euro on the uh, you know the, the day of the ECB decision, clearly the forward guidance was what the market was paying attention to, and the fact that that has now completely been changed from from what we'd heard from the ECB earlier in the year. So even though Lagarde did stand fast on the on the 50 for hike being delivered, certainly the outlook from here is much more cautious, and I think that's what the markets will continue to pay attention to. And the hope is even though that we have had some stronger numbers, obviously in the UK, uh, and there is still inflation pressures around, that the risk potentially for the European banking system, even if they may not be completely well-founded, I think there's a lot of stories that have swirled within the markets over the last week, um, which may not really have a lot of basis in fact. Uh, but at the same time, I think that, that hit to sentiment and to you know, confidence within the economy is something that the ECB won't be able to ignore, particularly when they're trying to engineer a soft landing. And it's the, the true case for all central banks. Uh, where you are, the RBA, everyone's talking about when this pause is going to happen. Mm. We have inflation com numbers coming out this week. You saw retail sales alike uh, to really deal with. What are you looking for in terms of those signals coming through from RBA now? I think from the RBA, you know, where we land is that they are going to pause in April uh, and then have pushed the next hike out to May in terms of our house call. And I think overall, it's the language from the RBA's latest decision, um, you know, really that, you know, most for us was really the, the main determinant. I think the data is important at this stage, but it's probably really only that quarterly CPI that will really matter, which comes at the end of April, which would drive their hand to, to actually hike again. I think, you know, we get the, the sense from their sentiment that, uh, you know, they were feeling that a pause was approaching or a need to, you know, towards the end of this cycle to be approaching. And I think that that's the most important thing to pay attention to. I mean, clearly what I'm saying here is nothing that the markets haven't already started to price. Uh, but certainly I think it's a massive change in rhetoric from what we saw back in February from the RBA.